Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So, I've got a nice bit of simple fabrication to do today. So, I've got a bale spike to make. So, I've already got a few of the box section bits cut, but I'll just quickly show you um, what it's going to look like and then I'll get the rest cut out. So, this is just a quick drawing of what it's going to look like. There's no point drawing it in CAD when it's just something simple like this. So, it'd be 1800 wide, be four times across the bottom, be two meters tall. I'll be 2.2 meters overall with the thickness of the box section and then the right width for the brackets so the JCB Q-fit brackets will weld straight onto the frame there and there and then it'll be two times up the back or four times up the back as well um, and I'm making out of 100, 100, 100 by 100 by 6 mil box section So that's all I'm cut now, um, but the, the two uprights need two holes cutting in top on both sides and then the bottom needs four holes cutting in on both sides. So I think I'll sit them onto the CNC table and use the CNC plasma to cut the holes through it. Obviously I'll have to cut one side, turn it over and then cut the other side. Right, so I'm just going to quickly draw the spacing, well the Tine holes in the bottom box section. So, um, so I draw a rectangle first to represent the box section. And I mentioned that, which is 1800 by 100. And then we want a 58mm hole. Fifty-eight. I want that fifty mil from the end, and then fifty mil from the bottom. So we went four of them holes, and then they want to be spaced at five six six point six six, and we want four of them. And then that should work out. Yeah, well, point zero two over. That's near enough. Right, so that's that bit done. So I'll just. I don't think I need to do this bit, but I'll just extrude it so it's. So that's like one side of the box section. So I'll save that as. A DXF and then we go to sheet cam now and then we'll open up that part Right, so that's that opened up. So we don't want this outside line, we only want the holes. So, um, if we click on that, 
not that point, just gonna hit that one, click on that one, put that one on a different layer. Outside. So we don't want that one. So now we're going to operations, plasma cut. That's that one. We want them inside offset. Perpendicular leading. We'll do that 25. Don't need lead out. So yeah, that's that done. Um, it's a bit fast. I'm not. I'm not showing you this bit to show you how to do it. I'm just showing you like how I do it. So that's why I'm just whizzing through it. Right. So save that now. Run post processor. What file are we up to? 570. Save that. Right, so that's that done now. So I'll take that out and plug it into the CNC. So I've got the file loaded in. Um, I've got the torch set up in the corner of the box section. So we should be right to cut that out now. I've got my measurements of how far it is off the end and how far it is off the side. So I could turn it over, set it back up again. Um, and we should have the, both sets of holes in the same place. Right, so that is them cut. So hopefully they should be fairly. I'm not expecting them to be bang on accurate. I, you know, I'll still square the tines up manually. I'm not just going to put the bushes in and weld them round. I'll you know square them up. But yeah, that's uh, them done. Right, so I've done the same process with the upright box section now. So we'll uh, save that onto the USB stick and then load it into the plasma. So that's all the holes cut in the box sections now. So I've got this one set up. I'm gonna, the, these are the bushes that get welded into them holes. So I'm gonna put these bushes onto the end of the tines. These are Konus 2 1250 tines. So I'll tighten them on, put them through. I'll put a spacer under the other end to make sure that the tine is parallel with the, uh, with the bench. Square them up, tack them in, weld them round, and then 
do the same with them. They're going, they're having short times in there. They're having 600 Kona Swan times to go in them. And then once I've got all the times welded in, I'll have to lay it all out on the bench with spaces underneath it. Because obviously the bushes stick out further than the box section. And then tack it all together and then weld it up. So that's them tines tacked in there now. I did just have to die ground a little bit out the top of that side and the bottom of that side just to get them parallel. And I've squared them all up, so they're all all right now. So I'll take them off the bench. I'll sit them on the pallet tines and forklift and then we'll weld round them. Right, so that's them welded round. They're welded round on the inside, halfway around them, just where you can get to on the end ties. So I'll do the same now with them other two bits of box section. So 
So that's them welded in. So we'll, I'll do the other one. I won't record that because you've just seen me do this one. So I'll do that one and then we're we'll back when it's, I'm attacking it all together. Right, see, so you can't beat a bit of job variation. So as you've probably realized, my workshop is on our family farm and with it being harvest time, I do help out a bit. So I've got roped into escorting the combine down into the village to go and cut some barley. So there I'm on a John Deere 6930 and they you can see I've got the header on the back. And then the combine is a Lexian 570. Right, so I'm back from my little adventure out in the tractor. So I've got them welded round. They're all done now, so I can start putting it together. So I'll get the bench cleaned off again, and then we'll start putting it together. Right, so I've got it laid out, basically, how it's going to be. It needs all squaring up yet. I made one little mistake. I always like to have the seams on the inside, but when I welded these tines in, obviously I wasn't paying attention. The tines should have been the other way through, and then the seam would have been on the inside. So I've got a seam down the outside, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just, it looks better if all the seams are on the inside, like the rest of them. You know, they're all on the inside, and that one's facing down. And that one's facing down. Also going to put some braces in here, both sides, which I'll have to cut out. I'll uh, probably use 100 by 100 box, same as what it's made out so of. So that's not looking too bad now. I've, I've squared it round, really big square in all the corners. Apart from that, I haven't done that one yet. Same measurement, both sides. Oh, I've got to say, I've got it sat on these bits of box section as well because where the nut, you know, you couldn't sit it straight on the bench because of where the nuts are sticking through the back. So I'll do some diagonal measurements now just to make sure that's right. If that all measures up, then we can tack it together and then I'll probably weld these top welds across first. It saves having to move it about so many times. And there's some caps to go on the end and there, and I might put some extra plates around these just to make the box section stronger, just so it doesn't rip the uh, tines out. It shouldn't do. They usually, the farmers are not very good at keeping the tines tight and they usually wear the bushes out before it rips out of the bush, out of this box. But just for a bit of added extra, extra strength, we might add some plates on. So in these corners, I've just clamped a bit of plate on so I can put my tape measure on there and then measure across corners. They both measure the same, both measure um, two, three, nine, four. So I'm happy with that. So yeah, we'll tack that together now. So I've just quickly cut one of these out just to see what it's going to look like. Um, I've got loads of bits of off-cut bits of plate that I can use for stuff like this. So I think I'm going to cut some more of them out. It'll just help spread the load of the bush onto the box section a bit better, especially when they're such long times. So I'll put one of them both sides and cut some short ones out for the end ones.
So I've got all these tacked on now, all on this side anyway. So what I'm doing now is just cutting some of these out. And these will go in there like that. So there'll be four, one on this side, that side, and then two over there. So the way I'm cutting them is just in the saw, but I've had to take the, I've had to take the clamp off. So I've just got that clamped onto there and then the little foot pressing down seems to be holding it solid enough. So what I've also done is plasmed some end plates to go out, to go on over there. But before I weld them on, I'm just going to grind down there, V that out a bit, weld that down, smooth it off and then weld that over. And then I've got some end caps to go on here as well, I've already tacked them on. So as soon as I've got them tacked on, then I'll start doing some welding. Right, so the electric's gone off now, so I'll have to go and investigate where that's gone off. But I've got welded round there. And uh, I'm just in the process of welding round these now. Yeah, when I welded them in, I did a root pass first and then a bigger pass over the top just to make them smoother, fill the gap in better. Right, so that's them all welded round. So I'm going to take it off the bench now, stand it up, do all the welding I can do on it, standing up. And then I think I'll take the tines out, just make it safer and easier, and I can turn the frame whichever way I need it then without having to worry about the tines being in the way. Right, so I've got them bits welded on. I've got the tines taken out, I've got them bits welded on, just on the ends. So I'm gonna lay it over that way now. So this side is at the top. This is the side that the brackets go on. So then I can weld all around these and then weld the brackets on at the same time. So then, 
So then all I've got to do is turn it back over that way and then weld up them bits and then that's everything welded up. So these are the brackets that I'm welding on. These are JCB Q-Fit brackets. Uh, this is my last set, so I'll have to get some more profiled out. But yeah, I just want cleaning up a bit and then I'll weld them on there. And I, I made the box section to be the same center as what the brackets need to be. So then they can just get welded straight onto the middle of the box section. So that's all the welding done near enough now. I've still got to turn it upside down to weld them bits. And then these bits here, but yeah, that's all that done. The brackets are welded on. And they're all welded round. So not massive welds, but they're perfectly adequate for this job, especially when it's only six mil box section. So with box section, you do have to be careful how much heat you put into it when you're welding brackets on like that, it doesn't really matter because you know the bracket is the strength. But when you're welding things like this on, or if I welded all the way down there in one go and then welded around there all in one go and what have you, I'd end up with the box bowing. See, it's nice and straight still. So you do have to be careful. You have to space your heat, heat out, space your welds about, so you don't end up you know, with a bowed bit of box section. When I welded them on, it was slightly bowed that way, but then because you're putting the same weld back on this side again, it equals itself out. 
you look down there, that's nice and straight still, you know, because the, the bracket is the strength. So I'll just give this bit of a de-splatter, knock them bits off and just smooth, smooth around everything. And then I'll turn it upside down. So that's that all welded up now and um, when I turned it over I've forgotten I hadn't welded them round so I've got them welded up, been over, smoothed everything off, removed all the splatter or most of it and then I've welded on some lifting eyes on the top so I can lift it up by them and hold it when I wash it off and paint it, make it easier. So it's, yeah, it's ready to wash off now. So it's washed off now, I've given it a bit of a DA sand, there was a few rusty patches on it. So it's all clean and ready to paint. So I'll paint it with red oxide first and then I'll paint it black as a top coat. I'll, uh, I'll just have to clean the paint out of them, I'm not going to mask them off, I'll just sand the paint out once it's dried. So that's the red oxide on. It's quick dry red oxide so it doesn't take long to dry. There's still a bit up there and a bit on the top that's not quite dry yet so as soon as that's done then I'll put some black paint on it. So that's that painted black now, it's had two coats of black, I haven't managed to get any runs on it, I don't think. Um, so yeah, quite pleased with that, I'm not usually very good at, well, I don't usually like painting, so yeah, that's gone alright. So I'll leave it to dry over the weekend now and then I'll come back and put my stickers and plate on it on, uh, on Monday.
Right, so that is the finished job. So the paint's had time to set now over the weekend. Got my stickers on. All the tines are tight. So yeah, it's come out all right. Nice, simple bit of fabrication. I've made quite a lot of bale spikes over the years. And even though all the bales are the same size, every farmer seems to have a different idea on what they want and how they want the tines set up. So this is made to pick up three Heston bales. Um, Heston bales are 900 tall, 1200 wide, and then usually um, 2.4 meters long. So if you stab the bottom bale halfway up, then that time should stab the next bale up in the middle, and then that will be in the middle. So you know, one bale there, another bale comes to there. And the top bale will just be above the top of the frame. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.